There is nothing worse for your taste buds than going to a supermarket in the middle of winter and buying a tomato. I'm talking about one of these things right here. And I know you've been guilty of it. I certainly have been guilty of it in my cooking career. But once you've tried a fresh tomato that's juicy, that's sweet, that's grown in season, it's almost impossible to go back to buying tomatoes in the middle of winter. It's like they're two completely different vegetables or fruits, because the truth is when you have a fresh tomato, it tastes like a fruit. For me, I just cooked with and ate as many fresh tomatoes as I could at the end of summer when they're abundant, when they're fresh, and I pretty much just gave up on them in the winter because they are trash. But that's until I went over to my friend Christina's house, who's an Italian pro cook, and I saw something very special. See, Christina is a real Italian home cook, and she's not messing around with shitty tomatoes. So she was teaching me how to make pasta, and she whips out a jar of fresh tomato sauce that she had jarred herself. And I was amazed because the freshness was insane. And ever since I tasted the freshness of those tomatoes in the middle of winter, well, I've been dreaming about doing the same exact thing ever since. So I can be cooking with fresh tomatoes all winter long, making tomato sauces, making pizza, all that good stuff. So I've invited Christina over today to teach me the traditional way that she's been preserving and jarring tomatoes pretty much her whole entire life. But before we preserve our tomatoes, we got to get our hands on some tomatoes. And this is the perfect time. It's the end of August when tomatoes are insanely abundant. Any fresh market, any farmer's market, there's going to be a ton of tomatoes. And I would suggest going up to your farmer and talking to them, seeing if they can give you a deal. If you're doing a big jarring or canning project like this, I guarantee they're willing to hook you up, give you a few dollars off the pound and get tomatoes off their hands because they're just trying to get rid of them. These things come in strong at the end of the season and that's exactly what I did. I talked to a farmer at my local farmer's market and he was totally willing to hook me up. We're just color red. And what's your name? I'm Scott from Deep Roots Farm. Up do, do people call you Farmer Scott? All the time. It's like doctor, you know? That's I'm a, a farmer. respect right yeah, there. I grow the veggies. <laughs> so I met Scott at the farmer's market um, and I asked him if he had tomatoes he could sell me in bulk. Is this something you do a lot? Yep, we do uh, wholesale a lot of different products, but right now we're swimming in tomatoes, so loving to sell them by the box <laughs> like this. So you're just trying to unload them? Absolutely. And do you get a lot of people that come up to you and ask for, you know, bulk orders? Definitely. Yeah, at the markets I've been trying to push it more, trying to get some signage up to let people know that we have boxes like this ready to go. We do 16 varieties. Um, I and mean, that's a mix of different heirlooms. We only grow three varieties of heirlooms, down from like 40 when we started. This variety here, so we do a ton of different, this happens to be a determinant, it's called Defiant. Determinant means that these tomatoes grow to a set height, um, but the most important thing is they produce within a short period of time, about two to three weeks. In that period of time, all of the tomatoes ripen. Holy shit. So Where you're... Like, <laughs> normally, an heirloom, you know, you pick a couple off, a couple more already a week later, this, they put out all their green tomatoes and they all ripen red or orange or whatever color in a set time. So you're under a little bit of stress like within these last few weeks? Uh, and back pain. Um, and these are these are totally organic? Certified organic, yep. Okay. Nofa NY, USDA certified organic. So we got some fresh basil here. Got this green oh Tuscany. God. Super big leaves, it looks something like that. That is insane. Tuscan basil. And yeah, check the size of some of these leaves out. Oh, <laughs> That's insane. It's really good. So it's actually a variety meant for pesto or processing because the leaves are so thick, it stretches. So what I'm trying to explain to people is that if you are doing a big project like this, talk to your farmer. See if they have extra. Most farmers, I'm sure, are trying to unload this stuff in Absolutely. bulk. Absolutely. You know, if you plan on canning and we're gonna go to the supermarket or something crazy like that, you'll definitely get a better deal from a farmer. And then we just picked this and brought it right down here. No middleman, we just bring it right to you. So what's your favorite part about being a farmer? Bringing food to so many people, you know, it's, it's just a good feeling to let people eat clean food that's not covered in Roundup or covered mm -hmm. in pesticide and you know other chemicals but the main thing is we eat a lot of veggies me my daughter my wife we eat a lot of veggies and we want and they're 
we're eating them to get the nutrients from them and not put poison in our bodies, you know? We want everybody else to get the same thing. So our mission is to bring all of this organic stuff down into New York City, down into our communities in Westchester and feed the community. I appreciate it, man. This definitely makes me happy. So uh, mission accomplished. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. So this is Christina. <laughs> How, how long have you been canning uh, tomatoes? Wait, would you call this canning? Or I would call it canning tomatoes. Okay. Yeah, that's how I knew Even though we're using part. jars. Yes. I've been doing this for, I would say, at least 25 years, but I've seen this for my entire life because my mother and my grandparents uh, can tomatoes uh, at the end of the summer every year. Where were you canning tomatoes? Where are you, where are you from? I'm from Italy and uh, from the northern part of Italy, particularly um, from a, an area called Emilia Romagna. That's a region where tomatoes grow, apart from the south of Italy. So it's a tradition to can your own tomatoes every year and uh, preserve them for the entire year to make pasta or different types of sauces. Uh, so it's a, there's multiple uses for canned tomatoes. So when you came to New York, was it something that you did right away or you started trying the, the products here and you were like, I gotta start? making my own tomatoes. Honestly, I, I did it right away because I was used to do it in Italy as well. Um, but I also found it um, more difficult to, to find the right uh, canned tomatoes. I was able to find a very good quality crushed tomato type uh, with mm. no citric acid added, uh, no sauce added. Uh, so it really tasted good and um, sweet, I would say. But uh, for the uses I need uh, yeah. you know, cooking, I prefer to get my own tomatoes. Would you say this is a simple process for people that have never done it at home? Yeah, I would say it's very simple. It okay. can be very easy because it's basically peeling the tomatoes, dicing them, putting them in the jars, uh, adding some fresh basil, no salt on added, nothing added, uh, and just uh, uh, then boil the jars uh, to uh, preserve them for at least a year. I mean, a jar of canned tomatoes can last over a year i would say a year and a okay. half so. but we want to i don't think we'll have trouble no consuming I'm the, it. i never had trouble consuming it within the year and i'm sure <laughs> they make a great gift as well oh yes which i'm Love. excited because we're making a lot of tomatoes today So what happens if the tomatoes have, you know, some marks on them, like you can see, you know, some, some bad spots, like some white spots one, or black spots? Nothing happens actually. You just boil them a little bit and before you peel them, you cut the part off. Okay. That's totally fine. So just throw them in there, deal with it. Throw them in there, yeah, it's perfect. Okay. Yeah. So right now, what are you looking for? So I'm just uh, taking to the surface those that I put in first because usually I wait until the peels start to crack a little bit. Uh, it usually takes a minute, a minute and a half. Uh, and when the peel starts to crack, it means that I can put the tomatoes in the ice bath and then we can start peeling them. So our tomatoes are cooled in the ice water. So what, what do you do now? Take the peel off with my hands with no knife. It's very easy. And then I dice it. So there's water leaking here, as you see. And as I was mentioning, I don't dislike adding this water to the jars mm. because it leaves the uh, sauce more liquid when you cook it. You can cook it longer. Mm. Um, some people, like my mother, take some of the water off and put it, put it in the jars so uh, that it's more concentrated. Got it. So Christina has this uh, this nice flexible cutting board, and the reason, well, why do you why do you like the cutting board? I love this cutting board because I usually don't have any tools to fill the jars. So what I do is uh, this. Uh, I just oh! Use, I'm sorry, this is a little bit messy. But, but so that's what 
I bought this thing, a little funnel. So if you don't have a flexible cutting board, we'll show you the other way. You the can other use, way is uh, probably easier. We could use this or a bigger spoon. Just use a funnel right in there. This is much easier. <laughs> It's a revolution for you right it's now. It's a revolution for me. I'm gonna buy this. <laughs> and guess this, what, guys? Uh, this is like seven bucks on oh, Amazon. I have I the link below. I will have it very soon. <laughs> <laughs> How high do you fill them up? So usually I fill uh, them up this high, um, even slightly lower, but it doesn't have to reach the top for okay. me. Uh, and when it boils, when I boil the jars, you will see it sink a little bit. Okay. And then um, after this, uh, we will have to add uh, some basil leaves some basil which is optional right but it's, it's optional it has more flavor yeah. and uh it has a very i mean it's it traditional it's traditional <laughs> like that. usually of course when when we make the sauce out of the um canned tomatoes i usually add more add more basil, basil. So, so we've washed the basil we picked through it first because there was some wilted stuff we picked through it um and uh it's a nice combination of uh green and darker basil so we can put uh, a couple of leaves in each, in each jar uh, just like this so this is gonna be like a cooked basil but then you totally can add more basil you add more i basil do add pastas. more basil and pasta sauce yeah. and the other sauces that i make with this We're bringing in the backup. Christina says it's very important that these are very tight. Good job, Marco. <laughs> the next part, which is very important for the jars and the canned tomatoes to last long, is to boil the jars for at least 40 to 45 minutes. These are bigger jars, so I would say at least 45 minutes. Okay, and okay. we would generally just boil some water like in this pot, which you can totally do, drop them in there. I actually have this beer kettle that has an electric temperature gauge over here, and I'm using this because it's massive. So we have some boiling. Oh yeah, whoa, the, bo the boil is ripping right now. And we're just gonna lower them in there, boil for 45 minutes. Dropping in, it just sit down there and boil. All right, we're becoming a, a tomato jarring factory over here. It's happening. Marco, you said they do it as a village, right? Oh, yes, yes, <laughs> yes. In groups, uh, families gather together because usually it's uh, a work that spans over multiple days. Yeah. So, so typically you gather together. So it's a company and work. So the moral of the story is find friends for, oh, yes. for tomato canning. <laughs> That's essential. So basically, these right now are rounded, yes. but then we're waiting for the pop. We're waiting for the pop, and the pop happens roughly half hour later, something okay. like that. And when if they don't pops, pop, is that a problem? I mean, if they don't pop, not necessary. It's not necessarily a problem. What I do is that the ones that don't pop, I leave them out for a week or ten days. If they look fine, it's uh, if, if the color is still fine, it means they're fine. Okay, so. got it. But a pop is a good sign. A pop is a good sign always. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, so we are officially done the processing part. Marco and Christina left. We've put everything in the jars. So now I'm just boiling them off. All of these over here, they're completely finished. And you're starting to hear the pops and that's a good sign that your tomatoes are properly sealed. The jars are sealed. So everything is under control. I figured I would make a pasta. I'm starving. I've been canning all day and Christina and Marco, they brought over some insane cheese from the motherland from Italy and this incredible olive oil. So I'm gonna show you a really simple pasta with a jar that's already finished just to give you an idea of what I'll be cooking up all winter long with these incredible jarred tomatoes. We're going in with our first jar of tomato sauce. Very exciting. Woo! That's a good pop though. Damn it, I missed that shot. <laughs> all that time and I missed the pouring shot. It's all right, it was beautiful for me.
that's incredible. That's really all I have to say about that. Christina was saying to get a good imported jar of tomato sauce could be $15, $20. So yeah, it took some time. It took half a day to do this but we just made hundreds of dollars of fresh tomato sauce and the tomatoes didn't cost that much because I got them in bulk. So I would definitely suggest you try this at home and make sure you follow me at Life by Mike G on my Instagram to stay updated on my food projects and I will see you next time. Stay cooking.